Welcome to the Keyforge Premier League. This is Jupiter from Manlius, New York, and I am proud to present to you week five competition between Dr. Sheep and the undefeated Rodeon, who's only dropped one match this whole set, like one match in a game. So like uh, he is on a tear and I'm excited to bring to you this matchup of uh, a one loss Dr. Sheep and a no loss Rodeon as we look forward to to what is in store with these two people with these two uh, monsters of the group a which i had deemed the group of death and so now i'm excited to see where they're going to end up and what they're going to be as far as um moving forward with this game so before we get anywhere um let me give you guys an idea of what they're playing so we have dr sheep on the on the left here playing relicion the affluent spiral admiral this is a deck that he's been playing a lot of um it's an ultra graviton deck that has a lot of cool uh manipulations in place and uh it's you know it has a couple of tco uh headaches but other than that uh, this deck has been doing really good for dr sheep and on the other side we see rodian's faithful guinevere uh phoenix uh, robotica and uh this deck has been basically he's been playing it to perfection he only has one loss with this deck um and that was to a 93 sas deck that he played in uh against mike last week um but he was able to pilot uh that deck to a victory over this deck um so but all in all, Rodion has been the Royce Gracie of the tournament and just choking people out left and right. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if uh, Rodion can choke out Dr. Sheep or if Dr. Sheep is going to put Rodion to sleep. One of the way or the other, somebody's going down. So let's go and tune in to this game and see what is good. They are already in game, ready to go. So let me uh, do a quick reminder. That we do have Fall Mass Mutation 2 deck survival uh, event coming up on November 7th. That's this Saturday, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. To uh, It's a $10 entry fee. 80% of that is going back to the uh, prize pool. First place will take away 25% of the prize pool. Plus an invitation to the second season of the uh, Keyforge Premier League. And uh, there will also be a random giveaway of 20 uh, luxurious playstyle Dark Amber tokens. Um, we'll spin the wheel and we'll see who wins those. That's a $55 value, uh, donated to us by the luxurious play style. So, um, super time, super fun. Let's go. And, uh, they're waiting on me. So I'll tell them to go ahead and get going. And, uh, we're going to dip this out and we're going to see what, what this game beholds with the new, uh, we have new, uh, layouts here for tco they've centered the uh the, the battle line now so it's kind of been interesting but we see a, a pretty good start here with the eureka the sutterkin the uh, director of zyx and um you know two and two of the other houses eureka is a pretty strong opening play for a rodian i expect him to probably keep this hand even though it is a little bit slower end game-ish with the uh, Swindle and the Key Abduction in hand, but I think he's going to take it for the speed that the Eureka might provide him and then being able to try to get his Sutterkin and ZYX online. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Sheep has already took a Mulligan um, on his half, and you see he is left with a half a Graviton, the Sloppy Lab work, the Font of the Eye, the Axiom of Grisk, and the spoils of battle. This is not a very good opening hand for Dr. Sheep. We are up to speed. We're just waiting on them to go. So it's all good. So there we go, the 20 minute countdown to 60, um, as we have an 80 minute set of rounds, we will see what transpires. So as expected, uh, Rodion does keep his hand and plays the Eureka just to get some archives moving and put him, putting him into uh, play. So as we see that Mars needs Amber and the special delivery went into play there. And then Dr. Sheep ret returns with a uh, sloppy lab work. Um, using the sloppy lab work to archive the bottom half of the graviton. We also see that uh, he doesn't really draw out of his problem, whereas he does have he has nothing to put on the board, but he does have pips at least, so he'll be able to play for amber as that as far as that goes. So we'll see how this ends up, but uh, this is definitely not the ideal start for his deck. 
So Rodion is taking his time to figure out where he wants to go with this play. As uh, it looks like uh, Logos is going to be the call. And he's going to play the Sutter Kid. And he's going to add the ZYX. And he'll add the Harlan uh, Mind Lock for no value of actually stealing anything, but the value of enclosing the ZYX so that uh, it's online and it's not on a flank, so it's a little bit protected there. Uh, you see Dr. Sheep is about to do some uh, axioming, and uh, he's going to get rid of these Logos creatures, I believe. Yep. He's going to save the Mind Lock. And he has a couple of cards here that he's just going to play out. And uh, spike his amber count to four. All right, so now Dr. Sheep is able to draw into at least one critter. So, um, But you do see that he's still going to be struggling to find any kind of flow to this game. Whereas on the other side, uh, Rodion is drawn even more into his Logos house with two Igors, and he still has a pretty strong package in the uh, in the Shadows archive behind it. So uh, he could use the Swindle right now, put himself to six, and make uh, Sheep have to deal with that, which he wouldn't be able to do at this point. So we'll see if uh, he tries for the Swindle, feeling the pressure that is being put on Dr. Sheep by not having any creatures to put on the board. So um, we'll see if Rodian reads that, uh, that sign that uh, sheep's a little is a little bit behind and in trouble right now. So there's the swindle. He does he does feel the the blood in the water and he goes for broke. I'll tell you, Rod Rodion has not missed many plays this tournament. The guy is very in tune with what's going on in the Keyforge uh, meta and what his opponent's trying to do and what he's what his opponent is showing him, in the in the way that his opponent is playing his cards. So this is textbook Keyforge play by Rodian. All right, so Sheep is going to respond by going through his sanctum and trying to get uh, as much as he can out of the way so that he can try to get some counter pressure back on and try to draw into something that is going to be a value to him. Um, so there's the it's coming. So he does have a chance to get to his graviton next turn, which will be interesting. But the standardized testing is in Rodian's hand, so he had he already has the answer to it. So I think at this turn he just kind of goes maybe shadows, and gets some stuff out of the way, like puts uh, the Umbra and the Long Fuse Mines on the board, and just kind of leaves it at that to see what his next turn will bring out, and then he could come back and uh, dig with the Igors, or he's going to start digging with the Igors now. Ooh, he might regret that standardized testing. That might be the first uh, the, the first move that he uh, actually ends up regretting in this play, in this tournament. He had a way to get out of the the graviton. Oh, and he just draws into another way to get out of the graviton. So never mind. That destroy them all came at a timely time. So he will not be punished if Sheep decides to go Graviton, which it looks like he is going to go Graviton. The Graviton basically coming out, ready to play. It does have a capture icon on it as well, so that's pretty sweet. Um... They will have to go into manual for this, I think, is what it's it's been doing. Oh, there was no amber to capture, though, so I guess he does not have to go into it. But you see him follow up with a Titan Engineer as well. He's holding a Kurzap as well. It's pretty gross. We'll see what happens. I think Dr. Sheep is deciding whether he wants to hold on to his Kurzap or not.
definitely he's not going to play it, right? Because then he'd just lose all his stuff. But let's see what he hit on the archives from the Graviton. So from the Graviton, it looks like he was able to archive some creatures, which is something he is heavily lacking at this point. So that's nice to see. Graviton is definitely one of the better Gigantics, I believe. I know he's not as strong as the others as far as power goes, but the fact that you get to archive five cards, it basically says draw five cards when you play it, uh, makes it pretty dang good. As the uh, its presence looms over the uh, the board state, and Rodion will decide whether he wants to deal with that or if he wants to get more value by sticking to logos and just drawing but the problem with that is, is he's already played so many other logos cards he's already played five six seven eight so there's only four logos cards left in his in his deck and they may not be the good enough logos for the for it to matter but it looks like he's just going to put pressure he's going to reap 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 set up all right so he did draw pretty deep into his shadows pool so that is an interesting, that was an interesting, uh, interesting pull there. See him going back into the Graviton mode. He will reap and reap. So when he reaps, he's going to discard a card from archives. If you do purge a creature and resolve each of its bonus icons as if you had played it. So he's getting rid of the Sutterkin here. Sutterkin is no longer a threat. There are still six cards in Archive. Hmm. I don't think Rodian needs to head for the Shadow's turn yet. I think here is where he uses his uh, Mars turn to get rid of that Gravitron because you don't really want it to uh, just keep menacing the board the way it is but it could be completely wrong as he does also know that there are there is the camp the Captura and the Curiosaurus in the deck that are both in his in Doctor Chief's hand right now. That are both very uh, viable artifacts that could uh, very be very swingy here. So he is going to decide to go shadows, and he is going to take all the amber away from uh, sheep as he goes on his quest to get to six amber. So we see the key abduction going into the archives. The bigger this archive gets, the scarier it's going to get, right? So that's it's an interesting line here. I, I, Dr. Sheep, I believe, has to go into dinos right now and just unload. Start to pull back some of that amber with the captured mechanic from uh, Curiosaurus. And use that Ludo to make it so it's harder for him to get his amber back the shrix will come into play here as well as it steals one now these one ambers will bounce back and forth a little bit before they uh get into a pool so that's another big play there An interesting line. Perfectus Ludo. Despite a slow start, Sheep's deck is definitely putting work in. Hmm. 
you see he's got a lot like writing in his archives as well he has six cards in his archive that doubles his hand basically and he has a decent amount of sanctum to uh, back himself up at this point so he has a lot of control right now that uh, Rodion is going to have to uh, to deal with so here we go. We'll see what happens if he leaves, decides to leave the Ludo in play, or if he decides to he has to kill it. I do have the long fused mines as well. You could put in some pretty good work here. Take his time to make this big decision here. I foresee a Mars turn happening. Yep. At this point, the Ludo might be more dangerous and should be a more of a must kill than the, even the Gravitron itself, so. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what he decides with this. So he's actually picking up his uh, his his hand as well. So he's going to look to get some value off of that uh, that uh, Yixel or Tixel, whatever beam buckler. It's a big card to play and bring back with the uh, key abduction. He'll get basically four points of damage off of that, which will be enough to kill the Shrix. So. There it is. Putting damage on things. There's the Tixel Beam Buckler. I'm guessing is going to be used to finish off the uh, Shrix. But instead, he's clearing off the Primus, which makes sense as well because the Primus is uh, dangerous for collecting things, right? Like he's going to basically allow Amber to be moved, which could be dangerous. He has quite a decision here to make. Like, does he kill the Shrix or does he kill the Council? Decides to play the Mars needs Amber for Amber, and he's going to kill the Council. Ooh, he draws into his extinction. His extinction is great against dinosaurs, and right now, well, I guess robots won't matter. Robots kill mo most of his stuff too. So we see Sheep taking his time, looking for his next play. Yeah, 
and we see he goes logos All right, we're seeing some archive manipulation. Crucial turns taking a little bit of time guys are going to have a long run. So he uses extinction to get rid of the graviton finally and busts himself up to 11. So here comes a big sanctum turn, I'm assuming, by Dr. Sheep as he's going to try to recollect some of this amber. Commandeer is an amazing card. I think Commandeer and uh, Vault's Blessing may be the two best cards in mass mutation at this time both cards do very very interesting things and they are uh, well positioned to be amazing See Commandeer as it's done its work. It's taken off, what is that, eight amber from this play line. It's still doing work.
So it ends the day taking nine amber off the board and capturing it across five creatures. The power of commandeer, folks. Card is fantastic. Now Rodion has to figure out what he wants to do and how he's going to counterattack this. Really only see two options for Rodian here. He either has to commit to his shadows and play his shadows, or he can go Logos, obviously, and use his helper bot to kind of get into position, but like still not have to worry about uh, the overall like draining of the shadows out of his hand. So we'll see what happens. He is definitely playing the Logos, and he is moving to try to get himself back in position to get to check. So he's going to use his pheromones to use the, the Tixel Beam Buckler. But will he fight with the Buckler? Does he go after the uh, the Brain Eater? No, he takes out the Kronos. But he does put himself back on check. Demanding that it be answered. So Dr. Sheep is coming back with his... <laughs> Sanctum plays as he's going to continue to try to keep pace with Rodian's pace and take him off check using his capture. See, Dr. Sheep basically takes himself to 9 Amber and brings Rodian back down to 4. And uh, has a ton of Amber on the table, though, which can end up being a problem at some point. But we'll see. Right now, there's enough armor on the board to uh, negate whistling darts. So that's not going to be overly effective. But there is a special delivery. So the special delivery could put some damage onto uh, the squire and the... Uh... 
the other. So special delivery onto the uh, Titan Engineer would work. You'd be able to uh, rip him with the uh, whistling darts, using the whistling dots and a special delivery. So we see the whistling darts come through and then we are going to see the subtle mall hits the cleansing wave. That's a pretty big one. Pretty good hit. You see Dr. Sheeps here making his play. Oh. Trying to maintain and close out this game. Bad news for Dr. Sheep is that next turn, these knights are going to take a ride. Cyborg, scientist, and human. So he's still kind of diversified enough that like uh, he could get away. He, he's probably going to... You'll probably extinct the knights, right? And get back 10 amber. But that won't matter if he can't stop the amber. Which he should be able to do. Rodion replying with the Mars needs Amber. Trying to buy some breathing room here, but uh, the well-timed wards doing their work here. game has been interesting back and forth back and forth <laughs> 
you see Rodion at six passes back to Dr. Dr. Sheep. The Axiom, Timely. So much Amber on the table though, like uh, Rodion is going to have to make a move on it, I think, here. The game is afoot. Dr. Sheep finishes out his turn and uh, still on the bottom side of making his third key while Rodian is scrapping to try to get as much as he can. Interesting play on the mine log. <laughs> See Dr. Sheep trying to put this game away. He does get to six. There's a swindle waiting. And Ronnie Wristlocks. He gets to eight. I think this is a good turn to swindle. Puts you on check and it takes him off a of check. That's got to be where you want to be living, especially when you can come back with uh, Ronnie wrist clocks here. But he could also be thinking that he wants to go ahead and use the Yancey gangs now with the action stealing two to put him six play the gets the extra value off of the uh, also off of the um, Ronnie wrist clocks because he's at eight so he would take him to six then five four with the two um, Yancey gangs and then be able to subtle maul something out of his hand and that would put him still in a position to be in check plus he gets to play the dust chronicles so swindle was not a, the best play for sure there you go now you see the value of this Subtle Maul, can he hit the Krizap maybe? I don't think the Krizap would even help him either. 
I think that's going to be game for Rodion. And again, you see him just applying pressure. I mean, he still does have the curious or so like he can still get out of this, right? Because he could play the the inquiry. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, no, he has the font as well. He'd have to kill something, though. Let's see what happens. Oh, wait, there's a damage pip on the Infomancer, too. So he can get out of this still. He's still not... So Rodian's still not out of the woods yet, but Dan is definitely falling behind. Rodion is, able, is being able to put on some pretty extreme pressure. Oh, now that could be interesting. Did that cost Dan the game? Nope, nope, he still has tricks. The font, I forgot, still goes off. He goes to 13. What a play, beautiful. Hard to see the extra pips, but that Curiosaur did work. Oh, but Rodion has a Miasma still. This game is still not over, folks. <laughs> what the heck? How epic. I think Sheep gets past this, though, pretty easy. Right? Because he... No, wait, he doesn't. He doesn't have any pips, I don't think, on these cards. The only one that has a pip is Axiom Ancient Power. Oh, but he has a pip on the Perfectus Ludo. Go figure. <laughs> Crazy. These two are duking it out with each other. It's nuts. Rodian has to concede. Holy crap, that was a great game. All right, so... Uh, wow, that had some twists and turns to it, didn't it? Back and forth, back and forth. That Curiosaur, absolutely nuts. Had a... Um, wow. The Captura did work, like... Incredible game, super fun. That's just game one. Now they'll switch decks and we'll see if they can go at it again. But while we're while we're waiting, reminder that there is a Fall Mass Mutations Madness two deck survival um, coming up this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Ten dollar entry fee. Eighty percent goes to the the prize pool. Twenty percent to maintenance and uh, league stuff and fees. And then uh, we'll have a giveaway of a luxurious playstyle dark amber uh, set of tokens, a $55 MSRP to uh, go with that mix. So make sure that uh, if you got the time to play this weekend, you come join us as uh, it promises to be a fun time. Plus at stake, you have the, the first person to be able to basically fully lock into season two of the KFPL. So um, that's a big deal as well. So, with all that said, let's get back to this game, and I'm um, curious to see where this is going to end up. That took a pretty good chunk of time, though, but, uh, yeah. let's see. So there's going to be a remake as Rodian wants to go, he wants to go second, or first, sorry, he does not want to go second. Ooh, what a game that was. So it looks like if those artifacts hit the board, it's pretty much going to be a hard press for Guinevere to to win, right? Like, uh, it just looks like there's just too many tools in the in the bucket for for Sheep's deck to uh, for Guinevere to overcome as far as the captures and stuff. So it's almost guaranteed that it comes too because there's so much uh, there's so much value that has to happen. So.
First game is epic. Let's make another, folks. Alright, so we're off and rolling. Um, we see the Techno Knight come into play on Rodian's side, and then we see the uh, response with a special delivery, a long fuse mind, and a Umbra. So the board is just ready to get blown up no matter what happens. Rodion being really harsh on himself, saying that he made some mistakes. He's letting us know. But he needs to regroup, shake it off. Try to take this game too. It's only his second time losing in this uh, group of death, so. Enormous. He can pretty much secure his spot in the uh, into the finals, I think, with a win here. So it is quite important to uh, keep his focus. All right, so we see Dr. Sheep playing the extinction to get rid of the Techno Knight and uh, add some combat pheromones to the board and put himself onto check. So, like, it's a big big play early. He's getting out ahead of uh, Rodion and putting some pressure on the stake where Rodion is now going to respond by coming back with a, a Graviton, maybe? Interesting. So he decides to go after just one half of it. I'm not too sure that that is the proper proper move.
Alright. So we see Rodian basically play a cleansing wave to heal the Cronus, and then he's going to play the standard. Still holding on to the Captura and the, Sir, the uh, Curiosaurus, which I think both need to get into play sooner than later. So we see the Graviton come into play, but it has to basically uh, capture, so that's interesting. We see that in the archives he scores some pretty cool stuff. But now his uh, Amber Captura and the Curiosaur can really get into business.
So we see the miasma come into effect. Just put, get, to get that amber value. This goes through his hand and uh, loads up and he's gonna use his uh, combat pheromones here to collect or worm the graviton maybe? Oh no he can't because the graviton would kill it so he has to use it to eat the uh, other titan mechanic. And puts himself to five. Interesting. Hmm. I think we have to see a turn where uh, we see these artifacts come into play, right? He's been holding on to them for a while now. I think this is the turn where they make sense. It's going to give him some play lines. Kind of let him set up for another uh, sanctum, a bigger sanctum turn when needed. I think it is the way to go. Welcome to the Thunderdome, says Harlan. <laughs> Crazy kid. See all kinds of action right there, folks. Here comes the Saurian Collective. This is where the game gets interesting. This game most likely is going to go to time at the rate that this, the, these games have been going. So it's very interesting to see the positioning here. Dr. Sheep ends his turn on check with a key in hand, and Rodian has to respond. But he has plenty of things he can respond with. Will we see the common deer? Or will we just see another uh, blitz from the logo side of the house? AT&T, you can pick the perfect plan for each. 
see Rodion basically going by route of using the Curiosaur and the Captura to acquire enough Amber and Capture to uh, stop this this rush by sheep, as expected. We see Rodian go to check. So here comes the first key for Rodion. But Sheep is able to push to 8 Amber. What is Rodion going to do here? Again, he's stripped down by the, the Captura. The Curious Sora and the Captura together are quite the combination. Harlan, calm down, son. 
machen. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. Yes, hi. YouTube kids. Let me put YouTube kids on for you. <laughs> hey Siri, turn on guided access. Activating guided access. See Dr. Sheep doing all he can to basically try to uh, get to his second key, but uh, not really a whole lot he's able to do here. Oh, he pushes to 11. This might be enough here. Maybe. Maybe not, though, because the, the uh, Sanctum set is still pretty deep on the uh, on the other side our four cards and archive now here there's a burst of 13 Let's see what Rodion has left So if he plays the squire first, he can capture one, two, three, four, five amber. But he goes with the commandeer first. Rodion does take himself to nine though, which is uh, puts him in position to make another key. But there's a swindle on the on the loom here. Will uh, sheep go for the swindle, or will he re would he rather get back the six amber from the squire with the oubliette? I think that might be the better play. No, oh, he's gonna go Mars and destroy the. Uh... Oh, he's gonna use it to destroy the Captura. The uh, destroy them all can kill the Captura and the Squire in one shot. And that's gonna be huge. That's gonna put him in a position to be very much on the skirt of winning this game and moving into first place in Group A. Nicely done. Is there a capture pip on any of those? I don't think so.
Yeah, I think he. I think Rodian goes down two to zip to the doctor. I think uh, the sheep win the sleep. I can't think of a way. Going sanctum. Oh, this guy, when he fights, does have a chance, I guess. Small one. Because of the smite, he'll be able to uh, bring back the uh, amber. He'll be able to capture a couple. Bring it back into reach and put himself in a position to win. Wow. Sweet play. Will it be enough? Swindle says no. There's the swindle. There is a capture on the um, the graviton, as we know. But that only gives him one. Where will he pull the other one out of? That's the question. I don't think there is one. I think that seven is the magic number. But I've said that before and not thought of something. So it's a loose interpretation here. It was destroyed this turn. Friend of the creature captures one. So. He needs to definitely bring this online. I don't believe Gravitron has a thing for killing anything. Oh wait, there's a, it, oh, the dam only one damage pit, damage pit though. I think he might have it this time for reals. It's coming. So we're looking at him go down two to zip to the sheep. The doctor is in. And what a great game by these competitors. Uh, pretty sweet gameplay there. Uh, Dr. Sheep just showing dominance with his, uh, with his game. Um, that deck has been doing really good and it was super close. That was like an intense battle on both games and uh, it was fun to watch so for all you guys out there keeping track this is the they got one game left basically and uh group a is coming down to the wire so um i don't know how many people will even be locked up at the end of this uh week uh it looks like it's gonna still be a lot of flux um in in group a at least so keep tuned we will have a couple more games this week for you up and ready to go and the tournament looms we'll get you more details once we set up the tournament schedule once we have our top 16 um but remember that this weekend last last uh, quick quick note this weekend we do have the fall mass mutation madness two deck survival um mass mutations only november 7th 11 a.m eastern uh 4 p.m. GMT, uh, $10 entry fee, cash prizes of up uh, up to the top eight, basically divided amongst the from the pool that people pay to get in, and uh, we will see what happens with that. But with all that said, this is Jupiter for on behalf of the Keyforge Premier League and the Crazy Killing Machine Network, and thank you guys for everything because without you we are nothing. So we'll see you soon.